That's good. That'll be fine. Give me a good reason why. Just thought about the day Right. <laughs> I mean, most of the people who are born are wicked, aren't they? Yes. Because most of the people on earth are wicked. Yes. So why should you celebrate the day when a wicked person is born? And you should celebrate other people's birthdays who are pious and good and holy. Why should you celebrate the birthday of worthless people? And giving yourself the compliment as if you, you know, you're a bad pig and they're tough and that important as your birthday should be celebrated. These things, things are accidental. Birth and birthday and all, everything connected about them is just accidental, isn't it? For accidental things you don't celebrate. You celebrate for achievements. What is your achievement in being born? Tell me. You didn't participate in any way in the whole you know, process of birth. You were just born accidentally for causes which were not of your control. So why should you celebrate a thing in which you didn't participate? You have no, no right to. <laughs> You said about on Tuesday that um, God is quite close to you yes. as a person. And will, will that go for the non-believers? Yes. In that sense, He's close to everyone. But He's remote from them because in the other sense which I described on Tuesday, right? Unless you travel towards Him spiritually, you can't uh, <coughs> close the gap. Although this gap is infinite, yet you are traveling towards God, that is, you are feeling the sense of nearness towards Him. That can be done only spiritually. So those people who don't even care do that, God remains remote to them forever and forever. Yet He is here, everywhere. His presence is there. <coughs> Yes, please. Sorry. What is wrong? So if you have a, a dream, um, and you, if no one in the family knows... Um, the meaning of that dream. Yeah, the meaning of that dream. So what do you advise the best thing to do? Write to me. <laughs> um, why is it that most of the prophets were from um, the Arabic and the Jewish race? And not really there. Well, well, that's what... Like, like uh, Muhammad and Jesus. How many prophets are mentioned um, having been born in that area which you have just referred to? Oh, from Jewish race. And How many? Just a rough estimate. Um, I, I don't really know. Say so if you could a score or two scores or three scores. Well, oh, I thought that a lot of them were born. Read the, all the names mentioned in the Bible as prophets and in the Holy Quran and uh, you can count them on on your fingertips twice twice you know on the hands hardly there will be and in the at maximum I think there shouldn't be more than 35 or so anybody who can correct me on that so why, why don't why don't we in this moment but we know from a traditional Holy Prophet of Islam that there were 124,000 prophets born on earth. So where were they born then? Well, why, don't we know, the why don't we know about all ones from Europe? And that, is, that is a good, very question, which I have repeatedly answered before. The fact is that the history of only those prophets was to be preserved on whose line uh, the final prophet and the perfect prophet was to appear. That was the most important history for mankind. Why should have Holy Quran recorded and preserved the history of all the prophets on earth, ranging between 100,000 and some? How big that would become, that book would become? While if you stick to just one line, on which the final manifestation of prophethood is to appear in the most consummate form, 
then it serves a full purpose completely. And also a representative specimen of prophethood is given from referring to that line. So you don't have to look elsewhere for any phenomenon belonging to prophethood which uh, might have been missed here in this line. So it's a completely representative line of prophets in which every possible incident that could have occurred to prophets or any possible attitude of the people who oppose them has been mentioned completely and preserved. So it's useless to increase the list unnecessarily. The Holy Quran yet is the Holy Quran categorically mentions repeatedly that these are not the all, all the prophets, they are just specimens. Nowhere on earth can you can you can find any area where prophets did not appear. There is no race where prophets did not appear, no time when prophets did not appear uh, after the first revelation was made to man. So the whole earth abounded in prophets at various times in different races, in different geographical regions. Does, does that mean that there will be prophets? Does that mean there will be prophets um, now? There is a prophet now in, in whom you believe, don't you? No, I mean alive at the moment. Fine. I mean alive at the moment. I, I said final law bringing prophet has come, didn't I tell you? So no law can be brought again after the law of the Holy Quran. No independent prophet can ever be born anywhere because the prophet of the whole world has come. While previously the prophets only addressed some uh, smaller areas or some smaller people, some tribes and so on. So nowhere in the earth would you find any prophet prior to Ahmad who claimed to have been the prophet of the whole world, of the whole mankind. So when this phenomenon has developed to maturity and it has been completed, then obviously there can't be any other prophet of that scale and that magnitude bringing a law because the law which has been brought by Ahmad is perfect. You can't add to perfection. You can't subtract from perfection. So if the law is preserved and the book is preserved, that must continue. That is the logic behind this, this uh, thinking. So we believe that as far as the final prophet, law bringing prophet is concerned, the final prophet with authority, that was Ahmad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and after that, no such prophet can ever come. As far as the subordinate prophets are, con are concerned, there are many types of subordinate prophets. Those who are like prophets, like the earlier prophets, and who have the status of those prophets, but who cannot be declared prophets by the new definition. That is, a prophet like Ahmad who addresses the whole mankind. So although they have the status of the earlier prophets, yet they are not called prophets because now the prophethood has risen to a very high standard. So only he would be called a prophet who subordinates the holy prophet of Islam in every respect and addresses the entire mankind. Such a prophet has come. As far as the future is concerned, Allah knows best. But Whoever comes, if anybody is to come again, he will have to refer his case to the founder of Islam and find his authority from him. <coughs> if he is opposed, he will have to produce some evidence, some argument in his favor, um, and he will have to quote the Holy Quran and the tradition once again. So, Muslim did the same, and to our satisfaction, so we believed in him. So why should we bother about the prophet of future? Let's first finish with this uh, process. Yes? Um, when a man is jailed for life, uh, a man like uh, some mass murderer or 
and Marcy Walker and the right, Rudolf Helsing. <laughs>